Here we have a Gigabyte RTX 3070 video card that came in for new power. We already removed the motherboard so we can see what's going on. And I'm actually going over the customer's ticket to read what's going on and why this card was mailed over to us. Let's read what the customer wrote. Set up the RTX 3070 on my PC and one day while playing Fortnite, after an hour or two, I smelled smoke and my computer shut off or I shut it off in panic. I turned it on again and it doesn't display any longer. Screen remains black, fans do not spin and LEDs, but LEDs light up. I don't know what happened, but I have a 750 watt power supply. I never cleared out my OC settings from my previous card, so that may have broke the 3070. I'm not sure. Please let me know if this is fixable. Thank you. So the customer mentioned something about not clearing out the overclocking settings on his previous card, and that may have contributed to this card failing. I do not know if that's possible or if that can happen, but let's see what's going on and why the card is not powering on. If the customer smells smoke, it means we have to see a burnt component or a blown component or a discolored component. And that's what I'm looking for right now. Sometimes smoke is a good thing because it can pinpoint you to the problem. But we do not know if we do see a burnt component or a blown component. We do not know if something else was affected on the board. Let's do a quick visual inspection. The board looks absolutely clean. Smoke could be a good thing because it can pinpoint us to the chip that may be burned, like this one. You see, that's what I mean. Smoke can be a good thing. That's a buck converter. And we do have that chip in stock because I've worked on a similar issue on similar cards before. But all I have to do is locate that chip. It should be GS9216, if I recall correctly. Let me check. Is that the one? And you can tell I've used two chips, two similar chips to fix Gigabyte video cards before. GS9216. Yeah, that's it. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and replace the chip. We may have found the culprit, but we do not know if anything else was affected. A burn chip does not mean that replacing the chip will fix the problem. We do not know if anything else was affected, but one way to find out. We have two options. We can replace the chip and test, or we can guess all day. Hand on your face, leaning down and thinking. Looking at the clouds and thinking. What if? How come? How about? Which one are you? For me, you all know me by now. I'd rather replace than measure. And I'm successful 80% of the times. Why waste time? Now, we have to be careful because we have an aluminum capacitor right next to the chip. We do not want to expose this capacitor to a lot of heat because it can pump. And that happened before. I showed it to you before how that capacitor can pop with a lot of heat. Right now I'm wearing my goggles. We do not want to take any chances. Your eye is much more important than fixing a 3070. Right? Or is it the other way around? Some people would give out an eye for a 3070. I hope you're not one of them. So they can play GTA at its maximum resolution. Who needs GTA? Just go in real life. Drive a car and raise the cops. Why not? That's real life GTA. Who needs a game? Tomorrow we'll hear that some people did it. And then they blame me for those accidents. I'm just joking. Let's solder a new chip and see what happens. Can we save this card? 
can we save this card? That's the question. Pin number one is right here. We have our cap covered by this iPad shield. And I have a thermal pad under it. You know the 100 pre-cut thermal pads that we sell in a jar? Very cheap. They come in very handy when you are trying to block heat off a component. What I do is I put them under a shield, like this iPad shield I have over the capacitor. And they do an amazing job. Alright, chip is soldered on nice. You see how when we tap it, it pulls back? That means the chip is in place and aligned properly. Now we're gonna press and heat up again so we can squeeze out all the axis. And just like that, we're done. And we're gonna leave those solder blobs for decoration. You do not mind, right? Huh. I heard some of you say that you do mind, so let's get rid of it. Let's save the world from complaints. And get rid of the blobs. Perfect. We're good. Will the card work? That's the question. We did not do any measurements. We did not measure anything. And some of you are wondering, how is that guy fixing this card and he did not even measure anything on the board? It's amazing how some of you do not feel like they did any work if they do not spend hours and hours and hours measuring every component on the board and they think that's what expertise is all about. Measuring every component on the board. You have a long way to go. You wanna aim for efficiency. We have a customer that came in, he's a locksmith. And he told me a story. He said, one day a lady called me. She was locked out of her house at night. It was raining heavily. And she was crying over the phone for somebody to help her out, urgent. They agreed on a price of $175. The locksmith went over to her house and he was able to open up the lock in 30 seconds. And the lady was complaining. Why are you charging me $175 for a 30 seconds work? The locksmith said, on that night, I learned a lesson. I should have kept that lady outside in the rain for five hours pretending I'm trying to open up that lock. And maybe I could have charged that lady even more money. Why do people do this? He got you inside the house as soon as possible. You should be thanking that guy for coming over as fast as possible and for getting you inside as soon as possible. You pay him extra. You give him a tip for doing that. You do not argue with him about why are you charging me $175. Let's go ahead and test this video card and see if it will work. But uh, we need to put it back in its case so we can plug the power cables. All right, so I connected the back plate, the cables, and now we are able to plug the power cables right here. Let's do it. I do not have a fan or heat sink, but that's okay because the card should turn on for about 20, 30 seconds before it shot back off. Is it okay to power the card on without a heat sink and fan? For a short period, yes. The card is gonna shut off by itself anyway. Let's go ahead and turn the power supply on and what we do not want to hear is six beeps. We do not want to hear six beeps. We want to see something on the screen, right? <laughs> six beeps. So the chip did not fix the problem. The chip did not fix the problem. And that's what I said, beginning of the video. If you have a burnt chip, 
replacing the chip does not mean that the problem will be fixed. That's exactly what I mean. Now, what is connecting with that chip? I have no clue. I have no idea. I need to search and see if we can find schematics and board view diagram for this video card so we can tell what connects with that chip and then we can trace all components that connects with that chip and try to find the fault. What component on the board did this chip affect? Did it affect the GPU? Did it affect anything else on the board? I don't know. Now I can probably get the data sheet for this chip and then we can see where VN is, where enable is, and then we can do that. But still, we're not going to know. Let's say we do not have enable here. Where is this pin connecting? What part of the board is this pin connecting to? What part of the board is this pin connecting to? It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. We need a board view diagram and we need schematics. I'm going to still post this video. If you have any experience working on this specific model and you have any ideas, let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to try to troubleshoot the board without schematics and see if I can figure it out. If I do find anything, I will continue with the video. And let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. You have schematics, board view diagram, just send it to me. And I will see you again in the next video.